Okay, let's go ahead and say that just like you see here on my workbench, you have a mushroom culture that has completely colonized the substrate onto which it was growing. It is not contaminated in any way. Everything looks really good. And just like you also see here, we have some little teeny tiny growths of mushroom pins starting to be put off that will then become, if the conditions are right, a fully matured mushroom fruit body. But let's also say that this is the only culture that you have of this particular strain. Say that you like lost all of your other cultures on your like your liquid cultures or petri dishes or like this is the only mushroom bag or mushroom jar or whatever that actually made it to literal fruition, you know, and that this is all you have. There's actually a very simple way that you can save the genetics from this mushroom colony right here. And it's a pretty easy and a pretty solid way to do so without having to worry too much about contaminations. And that is to simply take one of these little mushroom pins right here. Mushroom pins are just very, very tiny beginning stages of the fungal fruit body. You can take one of these pins. Here, let me get my tweezers here so I can point. You can take one of these pins right here, a little bit of alcohol, but that won't hurt anything. You can actually take those and just cut it or pluck it off of the colony. And then you could put that onto some nutrient agar for mushrooms. And the nice thing about using a mushroom pin to try and save the genetics for a particular species is that not only will that mushroom pin give you a monoculture, which is nice as far as growth patterns go, but also if you use a mushroom pin like one of these, they are actually pretty resistant to contamination at this point because uh, they have had the support from the whole mushroom colony that put resources into these little mushroom pins in order to start the process for reproduction. And also the nice thing about mushroom pins is since these are a essentially a baby mushroom, the growth pattern for mushroom pins is really, really fast as compared to like spore growth or even like liquid culture, regular mycelial growth, because so much of the resources has been pulled into these little structures here that the mushroom colony is trying to grow these out as fast as possible. So even if you do pluck one of these off and take some contaminations over with it, this is about one of the only cases where this is true. The mushroom will usually outgrow the contaminations that you may carry over with it, and it will kind of kill those off before they have a chance to establish themselves on to the air. Agar. There's a whole bunch of little guys on the back here which have not been exposed to air yet. So I think I'm going to take one of these for demonstration. Alrighty. While I was cutting that hole, I had these tweezers sitting in this little beaker full of 70% isopropyl alcohol mixed with a little bit of denatured alcohol. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of different little primordial growths and mushroom pins on the back here. So if you want to save the genetics and you have a mushroom culture or a mushroom colony that's gotten to this step, the easiest thing to do would be, let's go with this one right here. Simply pluck it off like that. Take it over here and we're gonna place it on the agar. Just put it right down there. Good, that's it. You can do that as many times as you want with as many different mushroom pins as you want. And if you wanted to, like I said, the reason why taking a mushroom pin like this and putting on agar is a really nice method of doing this is because that will give you a monoculture. But if you wanted to, you could also just take a piece of the mushroom colony itself, such as apart from right... Right in here, you could take a piece of that and put it on the agar, but that may not guarantee a monoculture. That may be like a, like a polyculture. I don't know if that's what it's actually called, but that's what I'll call it right now. Using like a mushroom pin in order to keep the genetics onto agar is not only a good way to keep that culture going. Say you inoculated this whole thing with just regular old spores, you know, like a sterilized water mixed with some mushroom spores and you put that in here and then it grew all these off here. Say that whenever it colonized and it got to the point where it started fruiting, you see that one single mushroom pin starts growing a lot better than all the other ones around it. You could actually take that really fast growing and really well 
growing mushroom pin, place that onto the agar, and it will save the genetics specifically for that mushroom pin. And then you can use that once it colonizes the petri dish to then inoculate another substrate, like another grow bag or a grow jar or whatever. And then that whole grow jar or that whole grow container will then contain the genetics from just that one mushroom pin that that originated from. So all of the fruits that that would put off would be sort of similar in like would be similar to the one that you started with compared to doing like a multi-genome culture like this, where you never know quite what you're going to get with it. Although there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having multiple genes in here and you never know what you're going to get before they grow. But that's just a way to save a mushroom culture and to kind of isolate the genetics from like a decently growing mushroom that you would like to save for future grow projects. And also say that you didn't grow this in the optimal temperatures, like say that uh, you once again inoculated just spores and it colonized, it got to this point, cut the hole in the bag, and you didn't realize that the mushrooms that you were starting to fruit needed a specific temperature to fruit and the temperature was either too high or too low or whatever, but yet you still start to get some mushroom pins put off even in those less than optimal grow conditions. That suggests that those pins that started growing actually contain a slightly different genetic code than the ones that are growing around it. So you may be able to isolate that little uh, variant of that mushroom, place it on agar, and then you could say that this culture is actually the same as this culture, but it grows, it fruits at a slightly higher or lower temperature or colonizes at a slightly or higher or lower temperature, whatever. You know what I mean. But there's all kinds of different ways you can play with the genetics whenever it comes to doing mushroom cultures and growing mushrooms at home. There's a lot of different experiments you can do to try and customize this and just try to experiment as much as you want to see what you can get to grow and what you can't get to grow. But I just wanted to show you real quick that you can just do a simple petri dish inoculation with a mushroom pin without having to worry too much about sterility, and it's just a really, really easy procedure. Now, since I have this in this little homemade petri dish, which is actually just a condiment cup, I need to then poke some. I need to poke some holes in the top here, and I'll put some micro pore tape over those holes in order for this to breathe in the incubator. But that's it. That's all you gotta do. Simple enough, right? <laughs> bye bye.